in the last six months, the government has awarded more than £2 billion worth of contracts to Carillion. It did so even after the share price was in free fall and the company had issued profit warnings. Why did the government do that? Let me, it might be helpful if I just set out for the right honourable gentleman that a, a, company's, a company's profit warning means that it believes it will not make as much profit as it had expected to make. Was the case, if it was the case that the government pulled out of contracts, or indeed private sector companies pulled out of contracts whenever a profit warning was issued, that would be the best way to ensure that companies failed and jobs were lost. It would also, it would also for the government, raise real issues about providing continuing uninterrupted public services. Yes, we did. We did. Uh, but we did recognise that it was a severe profit warning, and that's why we took action in relation to the contracts that we issued, uh, and we ensured that all but one of those contracts was a joint venture. What does that mean? It means that there is another company available to step in and take over the contract. But I say to the right honourable gentleman, this wasn't just an issue of the government issuing contracts. Yeah. Actually, we see that the Labour-run Welsh government oh. issued a contract oh. after the profit warning last July. And only, only last week, yeah. in the public sector, a public sector body announced that Carillion was their preferred bidder. Only last week. Was that the government? No. It was Labour-run Leeds City oh. Council. Mr Speaker, for the record, Leeds have not signed a contract with Carillion. It's the government, it's the government who've been handing out contracts. It's the government's responsibility to ensure Carillion is properly managed. Between July, Mr Speaker, between July and the end of last year, the share price of Carillion fell by 90 per cent. Three profit warnings were issued. Unbelievably, some contracts were awarded by the government even after the third profit warning. Yeah. Mr Speaker, it looks like the government was handing Carillion public contracts either to keep the company afloat, which yeah. clearly hasn't worked, yeah. or it was just deeply negligent yeah. of the crisis that was coming down the line. Mr Speaker, I'm very happy to answer questions when the Right Honourable Gentleman asks one. Yeah. He didn't. if they'd been negligent or not, yeah. and they clearly have been very negligent. Yeah. Tory MPs might shout, Mr Speaker, but the reality is, as of today, over 20,000 Carillion workers are very worried about their future, yeah. and for many of them, the only recourse tonight is to phone a DWP hotline. Yeah. The frailties were well known. Hedge funds were betting against Carillion since yep. 2015. Yep. Yep. RBS Bank, state owned, making provision against Carillion last year. The government is supposed to protect, protect public money through Crown representatives who are supposed to monitor these powerful corporations who get huge public contracts. So why, and this is a question that the Prime Minister needs to answer, and the question is this. Why did the position of Crown representative to Carillion remain vacant during the crucial period of August to November when the profit warnings were being issued, the share price was in free fall, and many people were very worried? I'm, I'm afraid I have to say to the right honourable gentleman, of course, a Crown. 
Uh, can I say to the Shadow Foreign Secretary, I will indeed answer the question, but I know that she herself has praised Carillion in the past for the work that they've done. So, can, I, can, I say, can I say to the Right Honourable Gentleman, yes, I mean, there is obviously now a Crown representative uh, who has been fully involved in the Government's response before the appointment of the Crown Representative to replace the one that had previously been in place, the Government Chief Commercial Officer and the Cabinet Officer, Office Director of Markets and Suppliers took over those responsibilities. So it was not the case that there was nobody from the Government uh, who was uh, looking at these issues. That is a standard procedure. It ensured that there was oversight of Carillion's contracts with the Government during the appointment process of the Crown Representative. Well, they clearly weren't looking very well. <laughs> Carillion went into liquidation with debts we now understand to be 1.29 billion, a pension deficit of 600 million, and at the same time, this company was paying out ever-increasing shareholder dividends, wildly excessive bonuses to directors, and today, 8,000 Carillion workers on private sector contracts will no longer be paid. The Chief Executive is going to be paid, however, for another 10 months. One rule for the super-rich, another for everybody else. Can the Prime Minister assure the House today that not a single penny more will go to the Chief Executive or the directors of this company? say to the right honourable gentleman that obviously this is a situation that is changing as decisions are being taken, but my understanding is that, the, uh, that there are a number of private sector contractors who have now come to an agreement, and facilities management contractors who have come to an agreement with the official receiver that means that their workers will indeed continue to be paid. Uh, I think it is important that we say that, that is, uh, the official receiver is doing their job and working with those, uh, working with those companies. He has raised the issue of bonuses. And of course, people are concerned about this issue and, want to, uh, and are rightly asking questions about it. That's why we're making sure that the official receiver's investigation into the business dealings of the company is fast tracked fast -tracked, that it looks into the conduct not just of current directors but also of previous directors and their actions, and that and the official receiver does have the powers to ensure that, that in reviewing payments to executives, where those payments are unlawful or unjustified, he can take action to recover those payments. It is important that the official receiver is able to do their job. It is also important Government's job is to ensure that public services continue to be provided, and that is what we are doing. The Right Honourable Gentleman said earlier in one of his questions it was the Government's job to ensure that Carillion was properly managed. We were a customer of Carillion, not the manager of Carillion, and that is a very important difference. And it is also important, it's also important that we have protected taxpayers from an unacceptable bailout of a private company. Mr Speaker, when Carillion went into liquidation, many contractors were still unpaid. This company, Carillion, were notorious late payers, taking 120 days to pay, placing a huge burden on small companies, four times longer than the 30 days in the prompt payment code that Carillion had indeed themselves signed up to. So why did the government allow a major government contractor to get away with this? Will she commit to Labour's policy that abiding by the prompt payment code should be yeah. a basic requirement for all future yeah. government contracts? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we, we, of course, we look at the uh, uh, behaviour of companies that we contract with in relation to payments. This, is, this question of pay, prompt payments has been one that has been brought up in this House, I have to say, for as long as I have been in this House, and efforts and work is always being done on it. But the Right Honourable Gentleman has raised an important point about the impact of Carillion's liquidation on small companies. That's why this morning the Business Secretary and the City Minister held a roundtable with the banks to discuss credit lines to small and medium-sized enterprises and to make clear that SMEs are not responsible for the collapse of Carillion. The Business Secretary has also held further roundtables today with representatives of small businesses, construction trade associations and trade unions.
uh, workers' unions to make sure that we're on top of the potential effects on the wider supply chain. It is right that we look at those very carefully, that we take the, this uh, action, and it's also right that we do put in place, through the DWP, support for any workers who do find themselves no longer employed as a result of this. Corbyn. It's a bit late for one subcontractor. Floratech, owed 800,000 by Carillion, have already had to make some of their staff redundant because of the collapse. But, Mr Speaker, this isn't one isolated case of government negligence and corporate failure. It's a broken system. Yeah. Under this government, under this government, Virgin and Stagecoach can spectacularly mismanage the East Coast Main Line and be let off a £2 billion payment. Capita and ATOS can continue to wreck the lives through damaging disability assessments of many people with disabilities and win more government-funded contracts. G4S promised to provide security at the Olympics, failed to do so, and the Army had to step in and save the day. These corporations, Mr Speaker, need to be shown the door. We need our public services provided by public employees with a public service ethos and a strong public oversight. As the ruins of Carillion lie around her, Will the Prime Minister act to end this costly racket of the relationship between government and some of these companies? Yeah. I, might, uh, I might first of all remind the right honourable gentleman that a third of the Carillion contracts with the government were let by the Labour government. What we want, what, what we want. What we want is to provide good quality public services delivered at best value to the taxpayer. We are making sure in this case that public services continue to be provided, that the workers in those public services are supported and taxpayers are protected. But what Labour oppose isn't just a role for private companies in public services, but the private sector as a whole. The vast majority of people in this country in employment are employed by the private sector. But the Shadow Chancellor calls businesses the real enemy. Labour Labour want the highest taxes in our peacetime history. They, Labour policies would cause a run on the pound. This is a Labour Party that has turned its back on investment, on growth, on jobs. A Labour Party that will always put politics before people. Yeah.